Welcome back, my digital mutants. It is me, Domico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media, giving you your daily prescription for digital intake. So, today, what are we going to be talking about? <laughs> We're going to be talking about something that's very near and dear to my heart. And if you've seen my previous video, you might have heard me talking about uh, free NAS. And in this video, what I'm going to show you is how to set up your own FAMP server. And now you might be saying, a FAMP server? What in the name of Dear Baby Jesus is a FAMP server? Well, a FAMP server is basically a Apache, MySQL, and PHP server running on a computer. Now, for Windows, they make something that's called WAMP. If we look at this, so let's say WAMP. So you can see they do make a service called WAMP for Windows, which is Apache, PHP, and MySQL on Windows, which they've done this wrong. This is backwards. I don't know why they did it this way because it doesn't spell out the way it should. It should be WAMP, Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. That's, that's how it goes because they there's actually a version called MAMP for uh, OS X for Macintosh um, and then there's a version for Linux called LAMP and no I don't mean LAMP like what sits on your table and illuminates your room I mean it's something that sits in your computer and illuminates your web development services right um, now I used to use FAMP and I used to use MAMP on my um, power on my um, my uh, power book but I've gotten away from that because there was problems with that. The, the, one of the biggest problems that I had is that when I ran MAMP uh, on, on, my, on my Mac, I had to have that computer on just to be able to do any kind of development for websites or anything else. And the way that I had it set up, because I did most of my stuff remotely and I did it on the go, I would just keep MAMP installed on my, on my, OS, on my uh, Mac and I would just use the IP address and get to that on my network. Now, I don't like keeping my laptop on like that. Like, keeping my laptop on like that all the time uh, when it's not being used, man, it's not really made to do that. It's not, really, it's not really made to be that way. Um, but when you're talking about, like, my, my, my free NAS server, now my free NAS server is meant to be on 24-7. So it's really cool for me to want to run some kind of server from this server here because it's always on. It's always supposed to be on, right? And the other thing is is that some people might argue, well, it doesn't really matter. You, know, you, you could keep the computer. You could do it on your desktop. Keep your desktop on. Use WAMP and, you know, and there. Well, the other issue that I have with running WAMP, and I ran WAMP on, on Windows for a very long time. The problem I had with WAMP is that WAMP sometimes would break itself. Um, because it's it's installing Windows MySQL server in Windows, and it's it's just funky. Like it was just funky. Um, there was like a couple of times where I had to uninstall it and reinstall it, and whatever I typed in local host, it was trying to find the local host of the. It would change my uh, host dot etc file on Windows and do a bunch of. It was just funky. I just I didn't enjoy it. I did not like it at all. So. Um, I vowed to get rid of it in some way. And I, I got rid of it by running um, FAMP. And I ran uh, Apache and MySQL in a separate jail on my free BS, on my free NAS box, rather. Now, the jail system is something that is unique in a way to FreeBSD. It's kind of like a, it's, it's almost kind of like VirtualBox. If you're familiar with VirtualBox or VMware's, um, kind of uh, virtualization softwares, then you know what a jail is. A jail is basically the same type of idea, but it's already built into the operating system of BSD. And since FreeNAS is based off of BSD, it gets to inherit all the goodness of FreeBSD, which are the jails. Now, you can see the jails that I currently have running, they all have IPv4 addresses attached to them. That's so I can get to these jails and get to these different things by just typing in the IP number on my network. Like if I came in here and let's see if it'll actually go to it, and let's do .2, 
and boop boop and you can see look there is my PHP VirtualBox I have VirtualBox I have VirtualBox installed on this FreeNAS box so I can then install virtual operating systems on that from here that's a pretty freaking awesome right it's really awesome um, so I'm gonna make a brand new jail so well before we even do that before we even do the jail and I do do all that stuff like that let's show you what you need to set up to make sure you got things working right so that you can get a SSH session going on with your free NAS box we want to be able to talk to your free NAS box through terminal through command line so for SSH I use Bitvice Bitvice is my personal favorite I know some people are gonna be like well what about putty what about putty I don't know what about putty forget putty screw putty no no don't screw putty that's weird and you might get arrested for that I'm a doctor I should know right those are abnormal things don't do that but I like Bitvice because Bitvice gives me a terminal console and it also gives me an, um, an SFTP window which gives me something that looks very much like a um, like a file browser it looks like a Windows browser and I can look right at the I'm looking right now at that box because I'm logged into it I'm gonna log out of it because I'm gonna show you how to go through that process so first thing I want to do inside of my free NAS box is go to services and make sure that the SSH service is turned on mine is on because I already have it on if yours is off you want to first click it on and then you want to click on the little wrench to configure it make sure your TCP port is set to port 22 and then make sure that your logon is root is is uh, you can use you use your password now you might ask well doctor 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 what's my password for my SSH well your password is whatever you set up for your password for free NAS so when you're setting up free NAS in the beginning whatever that password is will be the same password for your SSH so there you go and that's all set so kablam so that's the first prescription for the day make sure your SSH is running because if you don't make sure that's running then a lot of other things are going to go um, not so smooth so make sure the SSH is actually running first and now that I have the I know the SSH is running I'm gonna go into my jails and I'm gonna bring a brand new jail I'm gonna say add jail and this is gonna be a pretty simple quick process it's not gonna take us very long to install our brand spanking new shiny FAMP server it will be amazing you will love it you will love it I promise you you'll love it right um, now one of the things that I do with my with my MySQL server is I use I actually use my MySQL server as a database for for Cody and if people know what Cody is if you know that code word Cody if you know Cody I'm I'm doing Cody videos on my um, page so if you know anything about Cody then you will know what I'm talking about and I use that as I use my MySQL database to actually administer Cody and things of that nature too so so add the jail let's give the jail a name so it's gonna be PH let's say Phoenix so we're gonna do PHX underscore web let's call this web server because that's what it is it's a web server and I'm gonna say advanced mode and right here for IPv4 DHCP I'm not gonna enable that I don't like having DHCP enabled and I'll tell you why DHCP is great for some things if it's like a cell phone or a tablet if it's something that you don't need to talk to on your network and know where it is at all times and know how to communicate directly with it then you can use DHCP for it and DHCP on your network usually does a really good job of um, handling that now there's a downside of DHCP <laughs> people don't usually talk about this but there's a there's a dark a dark side to DHCP the dark side to DHCP is this if you have a network and it's set up and let's say you have wireless on your network and you just happen to have a security issue on your network let's say your network is accessible for somebody else on the outside if you have DHCP turned on on your router then they literally would be able to get an IP address and look like they're on your network yeah yeah that's scary right because somebody could basically attach to your network now they could still do it you know, right but this is an easy way for them to do it if you've got DHCP turned on on your router um, or you have a DHCP server somewhere in your house it's gonna give out IP addresses to anybody 
that's one reason why I don't like to use DHCP in my own home network because um, I do have a guest network that is a wireless access point that I just let you know friends use when they come over they don't need a password for it but it is segmented off of my main network that I know when somebody is connected to it and there's all kind of ways to keep people from getting connected and that's stuff we'll talk about later on the channel right so I'm gonna give this an IP address of 10.1.10.28 and it has a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and I want to make sure the default gateway is set and I know what my default gateway is and you would have to talk to your you know if you if you set up your home network you know what your default gateway is and IPv6 I do not want to use the stupid IPv6 address I know some people are gonna look at me and they're gonna scoff at me and they're gonna say for shame doctor for shame shame on you um, but the reality of it is is that I don't like the IPv6 um, addresses because they make no sense they are a 64-bit um, name for your computer that is hard as hell to remember um, these I can remember I can remember this now some people would argue that I could actually give this uh, you know um, an alias and and have it I type in something else and it would come up with this address and you know I have a net mask for it and and, da -da 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 and all these other things well, yeah I could do that but I don't wanna I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna have this set up and just have it the way that I want to have it so um, there so now that I've got this set I've got the name of it and I don't want to use DHCP I'm gonna give it a name and make sure I'm on net pat on net mask for whatever my local whatever your subdomain whatever your network is mine is happens to be uh, 24 and then whatever your default gateway is because it needs this default gateway so it can actually have internet access like that it needs that so you definitely make sure you you have that set so I've made my jail my jails being made boop, 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 boop. give it a couple of seconds and once the jail is made then I need to give the jail storage uh, one thing that happens with the jails when you build them and make them for free NAS th the jail is made but then it needs a it needs an alias place to basically go back to the to the full storage of the jail uh, or of the system basically so it needs a storage it needs some place to store all these things that you're gonna do to it you're gonna do awesome things to it so right here PHP underscore web server I'm gonna click on that in my jails list and then I'm gonna click right here on add storage and when I add storage I'm gonna come here to source and my source is gonna be let's just make my source uh, let's just make it let's just say render I'll use this pool here and I'm just gonna use documents and destination we're just gonna use media and you can see this is the destination for my jail so it's mount ph media jail and then there's the place where it goes to um, and then I'm gonna hit OK and give it a couple of seconds and there you go it says storage successfully added now I have my storage now my jail is ready to be accessed from the SSH command line and I can start doing awesome things to my jail so you can see there's my host name 10.1.10.16 which is the actual host name of my FreeNAS server and then port 22 and then I'm logging in as root and log in now some people are gonna look at me and they're gonna like really go crazy on me because they're gonna be like oh my god you're logging into your your FreeNAS server or you're logging into you know a session as root never log in as root well you can log in as root um, I'm just I just don't do anything to my base to my uh, base install um, it, normally yes for anybody you would know do not log in as root it's kinda like Windows 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 people are not are not as they're not as used to this but on Windows when you install Windows you should not be using the admin uh, account you probably should set up yourself another daily use account uh, for two things one 
the admin account has full administrative access to everything on your computer. So if somebody's like doing something to your computer and you suspect something 